All right, guys, it is spring in Toronto, which means one thing. That means Cirque du Soleil is back. Now we are seeing Kuza here at uh, well, a bit of a different location. The last couple of years it's been at um, Ontario Place. This year we're actually at a bit of a different location, and that is on the lakeshore. Sorry, my I'm squinting. It is very bright out still. Um, anyway, we're gonna go inside. We're gonna grab a bite to eat first, and then we're gonna go check it out. Okay, so first chunk of information I will provide is that the parking is somewhat limited if you're trying to park around the vicinity. Um, they do have parking on site. It is $35 though, so be forewarned. Um, in the actual area the itself, app. yes, you do. You pay at the end? At the app, yeah. yeah you got to pay on an app, so make sure you have a smartphone with you. Um, and then you got to show your receipt and a valid credit card, and, make, and then you'll show your receipt at the very end showing that you did actually pay. Um, there are some restaurants around, but again, make sure you show up early because uh, you're going to drive around trying to find parking and then you're going to try and find somewhere to eat. You're not going to have enough time. You can get stuff like hot dogs and popcorn and stuff like that inside, but you know, it's not quite enough, I don't think so. Anyway, just a couple little uh, little tidbits just to start it off. Okay, so sorry, the sun is still in my eyes. I'm getting all the wrong angles here. We just ate at Scatterbush right by the lake. So if you're looking for somewhere to eat, um, there's a few places. Like I said, there's Scatterbush, there's uh, Birkin, um, there's... Uh, something Trattoria, I forget what it's called. Anyway, um, we're just walking back over to the show now. Um, as I mentioned, you definitely want to get here early because we just had to like kind of like eat super, super fast in order to get to the show on time. popcorn and tequila drink was $30 so drink and eat before you come here drink a lot Just that intermission now. Um, first recommendation, when intermission hits, go right to the bathroom. Cody made the mistake of getting a drink first and the lineup is huge. That's the lineup back there for the toilet. So we went right from the bathrooms and we were in and out pretty quick. Uh, drinks, I think they got a beer for like 16 bucks or whatever. We'll see what the rest of the drinks are. Um, otherwise, I would say the only recommendation, not recommendation, comment or observation so far is that if you've seen Traveling Cirques, very much the same very much the same kind of vibe of you know the two sort of buffoons on stage sort of narrating the thing the distraction this that and the other that said it is still entertaining it's still fun there's still another half of the show to go another 50 minutes i think the show in total is 50 minutes and 25 minute intermission another 50 minutes so another 50 minutes to go check back later stay tuned
Alrighty guys, so uh, I wanted to give you my thoughts yesterday when we actually saw the show, but um, my plan was to do it on the car ride home basically. But uh, yeah, that parking situation is tricky. I will get into that a little bit later. Um, as for Kuza though, basically, I don't know. The best way I can describe it is, you know, from their reading online on their site, basically they're saying it has themes of, you know, fear and identity and this and that and the other. If you've seen these like traveling Cirque shows before, it has a very similar kind of story, I guess. It's sort of like this, you know, anti-hero in the beginning on his own or her own, sort of wandering aimlessly, comes across something, and then all of a sudden all this, you know, craziness ensues. It very much follows that same kind of Cirque pattern of that. And then this anti-hero through all these events leading to the end becomes the hero, basically. Um, it's a nice story. It's a nice, pleasant story, but I do feel that they are very similar in nature. Um, if you've seen maybe some of the, the Cirques in Las Vegas, um, I actually have a couple other reviews on my channel as well if you haven't seen those. Uh, the Beatles one, for example, similar kind of idea to this, but at least it kind of has that, it's a little bit different, but has that similar kind of vibe. At least you got some Beatles music with it. Um, even the Michael Jackson one, I don't know if that one necessarily has the same, maybe a similar kind of idea that the anti-hero becoming the hero, so to speak. But again, you have some, at least some different acts. I will say as well, if you've seen, for example, the last one we had here last year was uh, Curious. Um, the last couple we've had here, uh, Alegria, uh, Luzia, I think I think those are the last few we've had here. I, I can't remember, I, might, I think I might be missing one. Cort Cortio, maybe we had that one as well. Anyway, from my experience, at least the ones I saw, Again, very similar. Uh, even the acts are very similar. Um, you know, you always have that wheel of death. Like literally Cody and I just saw uh, Mad Apple in uh, Vegas uh, a couple weeks ago. And check out, there will be a review for that coming up as well. So stay tuned for that. But uh, even even that had some similar acts like the wheel of death, um, the sort of scarf, I don't know what they call it when you know they're hanging by the scarfs and doing all these things in the air and everything. Um, again, very, very cool, very well done everything. But again, I do sort of feel like, well, we've seen this before. It sort of felt like that a little bit. That said, if you like them, I know I do. I, I just enjoy going to them. So if you do like them, I would definitely say still go check it out. The show does run until June 18th. So you do have, you know, a couple more months left. Um, but just be forewarned that it is a limited engagement when these Cirques come to town. It usually is only for a couple months time. I remember they used to come here around this, like the fall. I used to remember seeing these in like September-ish time of the year, but the last couple have been here in the spring, which is still nice. Um, but, uh, and then prices will vary depending on what day you go, what kind of seats you get. Um, keep an eye out though, there are always deals. Uh, I, I would say for one, check uh, Groupon. Uh, they also had some deals, I believe on Travel Zoo as well. I would also recommend, if you do like Cirque du Soleil shows, I would recommend signing up for their uh, their online newsletter or signing up for their profile, like actually on their website, because they do send out offers as well, especially when the show, before the show actually starts, they'll actually sort of hype it up and send information out. I'm sorry, this guy's very busy, so you can probably hear him pitter-pattering, walking around and everything. It's breakfast time, so he's just finished eating and he's, as I said, very busy. So he's got his friend with him. Um, so uh, yes, price. So sign up for Cirque du Soleil's uh, email list. Um, they don't send out a lot of emails, so you won't get bombarded, but you will get deals every once in a while. So definitely, to, in my opinion, it's worth it because as I said, I know when they have a show coming out, um, they will uh, you know, have some sort of offers uh, in the beginning. And they also will send out, uh, I think once or twice a year, they have some really, really great deals. I think it's around Black Friday. And um, i trying to think when they have the other one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I would recommend signing up though. At least you'll find some, uh, some deals as well if you do like Cirque du Soleil shows. Um, the location, um, it has its pluses and has its negatives. I would say last year it was at, well, last couple have been in Toronto have been at the old Ontario Place location. Uh, before that it was, I think they would call it Cherry Beach. The Cherry Beach location was not my favorite. Um, it was also a bit of a pain to get in and out of because there's just that one little bridge basically that sort of gets you to the area. Uh, the Ontario Place location, I actually kind of liked. It was a little more open. You were right by the water. It's a little more picturesque scenic. I don't know, I like that location. That said, there was nothing else really around there. So if you wanted to go out for like dinner or, or drinks or something beforehand, there wasn't a whole lot that was like walkable. I will say, even though I didn't love this location, this location is where the old uh, Mr. Christie used to be down on, the, on Lakeshore. Um, you're basically just in a parking lot and it's 
yeah, you're racist in the parking lot. But that being said, there are lots of restaurants around that are walkable. We ended up at Scatterbush. We wanted to go to like, there's a Firkin nearby. There's Eden Trattoria. There's uh, a Thai place. There's there's a few other restaurants in the vicinity that are definitely walkable. Um, we ended up at Scatterbush. I didn't personally have the best experience with Scatterbush. I mean, the service and everything was great. We did tell them we were in a time crunch. I just found the portions to be very, very small, especially compared to the one at Sherway. I mean, Scatterbush isn't my favorite restaurant anyway, but when you're sort of in a pinch, you need something. It fills a hole, I guess. But uh, I did find the portions to be very, like, much, very much on the small side. Um, and I mean, I paid I think thirty dollars for uh, some kind of like a pasta dish that would, had like very, very minimal pasta in there. But anyway, uh, yeah, as I said, we were on a time crunch, so they did help us out with that, which was, which was very helpful. And I mean, but anyway, so yeah, there are walkable restaurants. Um, as I said, you're not going to see the lake, even though you are on the lake shore, you're not going to see the lake because you have all the condos sort of in your way. So that is the sort of one downside is that you are, it's not as picturesque as the Ontario place, but the trade-off is that there's a lot more restaurants and, and places you can go to have, you know, a, some, a bite or, you know, a drink or something beforehand. Uh, you can also get concessions in there. They definitely are on the pricer side. It's event pricing. I paid $30 for a little thing of popcorn that had obviously been sat there all night because it was just very, you know, cold and dry. Um, and a little tequila drink, like the Paloma. Uh, I know at the liquor store, those are probably like five, what, maybe three or $4, I would say. Um, so the markup is definitely significant, I would say. It's definitely up there. So be prepared. If you do want to have something to eat or drink, um, maybe do it beforehand and maybe just limit yourself to like one drink or something if you really want to have something there because it definitely is on the pricier side. Again, event pricing, you know what it's like. You will notice as well that your boy got a little more confident halfway through the show. Uh, I was able to record some of the act. Uh, a little bit just to give you a little bit of a taste um, they did mention no flash photography and you know if you are gonna have your phone out make sure it's on silent make sure that uh, you know the screen brightness is turned all the way down things like that so it didn't sound like they were discouraging filming and pictures like they have in the past so I don't know what the rule is there so if you are gonna do that again just you know make sure you're careful and not you know distracting any of the acts that are going on turn your flash off for sure um, anything like that that could be distracting is for you for other viewers as well you don't have your phone you know up in people's faces either so if you are trying to get that picture for you know Instagram or video like this for example um, yeah they I, I definitely found that the second act I thought oh you know I'll give us a try and see if anybody says anything and as I said, I've got a couple clips there just to, just to at least get a bit of an idea for you guys for the surroundings, you know, what it's like in there. But anyway, um, I guess that basically leads us to is this spot right for you? Um, like I guess in the beginning, if you are a fan of these traveling Cirque shows, yeah, I think it's something nice to do. I think it's a nice night out. I do think it's a nice night out. The show is about, uh, I think there's the first half is 50 minutes like five zero. Uh, the break in between is about 25. So if you need to go to the washroom, ooh, if you gotta go to the washroom, go to the washroom first. The lineups do, they, they move, don't get me wrong, but go to the washroom first and then go and get a drink. I do find that it's, I don't know, I I, it's, I just found it easier that way because Cody went and got a drink first and then had to go to the washroom. So not only did he have to wait in the longer lineup, he also had his drink with him and he had to take it to the washroom with him. So uh, yeah, go to the washroom first and then go and get your drinks or your snacks or whatever before you go back into the theater. That would be my recommendation. Um, but yeah, anyway, they've, uh, the first half is 50 minutes followed by a 25 minute uh, break and then another 50 minute sort of, I guess, second half and then you're out. The parking, um, they have ample parking there, which is great. So you don't have to worry about it. It is $35 though. So it is on the pricier side. We tried to park somewhere on Lakeshore, especially because that's where we were trying to go and eat, but the parking was just all snap, you know, taken. So um, you can park on the site for $25, sorry, for $35. Leaving though, leaving is a challenge. Um, the lineups of cars trying to get out. For one thing, leaving the actual theater itself it was a bit of a challenge um you know there's a lot of people sort of exiting out of these sort of bottlenecking out of these little areas but especially the like in your car leaving was a pain um yeah there was a big lineup of that so just be forewarned if you for example need to use the washroom or something like that before you need to go and you think ah i don't live too far i'll just do when i get home maybe use the washroom before you go because there is quite a line to get out um yeah just be forewarned but uh, anyway as i was saying is the spot right for you if you do like these traveling search shows, definitely, I think it's a nice night out. I think it's something fun to do. Um, it's family friendly, so you can definitely take your kids. Um, you can definitely, I think people of all ages can enjoy it as well, which is nice. You don't need to be like uh, of a certain age group or, or anything to enjoy it. It's just, you know, it's a nice act. Um, it's a fun night out. It's just, yeah, just something nice to do. Um, 
like I would say, you know, price wise, it's, it is that it does vary. So, you know, on the low end, you're looking, I think around the 50 to $70 mark. I think depending on if you use, are able to use any, you know, deals like Groupon or Team Buy, sorry, not Team Buy, Team Buy doesn't exist anymore, Groupon or, you know, uh, Travel Zoo or even some of the discounts that Cirque offers, um, those experiences can all go upward. Um, I know where we were sitting, we got some of the, not the cheapest tickets, but some on the lower end. And our view was pretty okay. We did have a little bit, I don't know if you know in these clips, we had a little bit of a, a sort of a pull in the way at some points, but honestly, it was really not that bad. It was fine. Um, There's not really a bad seat in the house because you're sort of circled around the stage. So you kind of get to see it from all angles. So I wouldn't say there was anything really negative to see about the show, um, the seating anyway. Um, but yeah, all in all, it was a fun night out. Like I said, Cirque du Soleil show, very similar, you know, than to a lot of the other ones, you know, in terms of act, in terms of like the story dynamics and everything, but we still did have a good time out. Uh, we really enjoyed ourselves. So definitely, if you like that type of thing, go and check it out. Um, and once again, oh, you know what? I got my friend with me, so he's gonna help me close this one out. So, oh dear. Okay, well, he's been eating his friend. Um, yeah, what do you think? Once again, this has been Daniel and Harlem with Spotlight, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.